All right, guys, lesson 5.4, automobile insurance. So let's get on with the vocabulary section. First word we have here is liable. This is when you're responsible to pay for damages caused by a particular automobile accident. So uh, when you're liable, it just means that you're responsible to pay for something. Next word is negligent. Now, this means when you are at fault. So if you cause an accident, if you hit somebody from behind or you hit somebody walking down the street, if you are at fault, you are considered to be negligent. Next vocabulary word we have is claim. This is simply a request for money. If something happens, maybe your car gets hit by another vehicle or you hit another car, as soon as you submit a claim to the insurance company, you're basically asking the insurance company to pay for some of these damages. Whether it's your fault or not, it's just when you submit a claim, it's a request for money. Next vocabulary word is deductible. Deductible is the amount that the policy owner must pay before the insurance company pays out. So the insurance company is going to cut out a check to you, whether it's your fault or not your fault, if they're gonna issue you money. If there is a deductible, you're gonna get the difference between that deductible and the total amount of damages. Next vocabulary word is no fault insurance. It compensates you regardless of who's at fault. So it doesn't matter whether it was your fault or the other person's fault. Uh, this is what's going to happen is is when you file a claim, the insurance company doesn't care whose fault it is. They're going to pay it out. Uh, a, uh, an example of no fault insurance is workers' compensation. So uh, it doesn't matter whether you fall at work, whether it was an accident, you did it on purpose, no fault insurance, the insurance company will cover that. Next vocabulary word is actuary. Now this is a, a group of statisticians and what they do is they predict how often a customer is going to file a claim based on a bunch of different criteria. Some of them are like age, sex, marital status, driving record, where you live, locality, all that sort of stuff. But they compile all this information and they come up with statistics on what the likelihood of you filing a claim will be. That's what the actuary's job is. Next vocabulary word is bodily injury liability also uh, known as BI, and this covers bodily injury. So you're responsible for paying the medical expenses of anyone who's injured in an accident. And so you gotta make sure that your insurance policy has something built in to cover those bodily injuries, and that is bodily injury liability. Next vocabulary word we got is property damage. Now this coverage pays for damage that you cause to other people's property. So if you get in a car, your car has property damage liability and it hits something, that other stuff that you hit, could be a fire hydrant, a, a pole, another house, whatever it is, that property is covered through property damage liability. Next vocabulary word is uninsured or underinsured motorist protection, UMP. This coverage pays for injuries uh, injuries to you or your passengers caused by a driver who has no insurance or doesn't have enough insurance to cover the medical losses. So we uh, in San Diego live very close to the border and although it is required for you to have insurance in the United States or in the state of California, it's not as required down south. So when people cross the border, they may not have the insurance coverage to handle that. Or maybe you, have, you got an accident with somebody who uh, let their insurance lapse, whatever the case may be, if you have at Added underinsured or uninsured motorist protection onto your policy if that happens you will be covered next vocabulary word personal injury protection PIP this is coverage that pays for any physical injuries you or your passengers sustained while uh, while in the vehicle so even if you're not involved in a traffic accident maybe you're parked that you know you're hanging out at school you're all sitting in the car and somebody else hits you this is still gonna cover personal injury protection is still going to cover any of those physical injuries that happen as long as you happen in the vehicle. Next word is comprehensive insurance. This covers uh, the repairs or replacement of parts to your car damaged while the vehicle was not in motion. It also covers if your car is stolen. So comprehensive is let's let's assume that you have your car parked uh, on the street and it's a windy day and a tree branch breaks and falls on your car. Your car was not in motion, it was parked. And because it was parked and it got damaged, Comprehensive uh, insurance covers that. So if your car is parked, it's hit by another vehicle or something, you know, maybe you get keyed or whatever happens when your car is not in motion, comprehensive insurance covers your car when your car is not in motion. 
next vocabulary word we have is um, collision insurance. Now this pays for um, the repair or placement of your car if it's damaged in a collision with another vehicle or object, like if it overturns, no matter who's at fault. So comprehensive is when your car is not moving, collision is when your car is moving. Think of that. Think about the word collision. It can only happen when two things are in motion, right? You collide into something. So if you hit another vehicle um, and you have collision insurance, it's going to pay for the replacement of your car. So property damage pays for the other person's car, but collision pays for you, the damages caused to your vehicle. So make sure you have co uh, collision insurance. Then we have car rental insurance, and this is going to pay for part of the cost or maybe the entire uh, cost of the rental car if your car is disabled and it has to go into the repair shop. So if you have a comprehensive repair that needs to be done and needs to sit in the car shop or you have collision damage that needs to be repaired and has to be in the car shop, uh, they're going to pay for a car rental for you to have access to a vehicle while your car is getting repaired. Last vocabulary word is emergency roadside or emergency road service insurance and this basically pays for towing road service when your car is disabled so let's say you get an accident and the vehicle needs to be moved to another location to the shop or whatever um, this emergency roadside insurance is added to your policy so that when they pick up the vehicle and take it over you don't pay any of the tow truck driving fees or anything like that it comes out of the insurance policy All right, example number one. So we got Leon here, his annual premiums for his uh, car insurance is $1,284. And he pays his premium monthly with a $1 surcharge that's paid on each monthly payment. So what's the total monthly premium including the, the surcharge? So if he his, if his annual pre premium is 1284, and we divide that by the 12 months in a year, his total monthly payment is going to be $107 a month, right? Now, the insurance company is going to add a $1 surcharge, so he's going to pay in total, he's going to end up paying $108 each and every month. All right, example number two. Stan DeMille has $25,000 worth of property damage liability insurance. Now he caused an accident that damaged $2,000 worth of damage to a fire hydrant and $5,600 worth of damage to another car. How much of the damage must Stan pay for? So first of all, we gotta understand that we have uh, $25,000 worth of property damage liability insurance. Now when you see these numbers on an insurance policy, this is per accident. So in this one accident, he had a total of $2,000 damage to the fire hydrant, $5,600 worth of damage to another car. So all in all, with that $2,000 plus the $5,600, he ended up with a total damage of $7,600 in damage, right? Damage. There we go. So uh, he has $25,000 worth of coverage. So last I checked 7600 is less than $25,000 that he has in total coverage so because he has less damage than his total coverage he's gonna come out of pocket a whopping zero dollars the insurance company is gonna pay the entire amount All right, checking for understanding number three. So Peter here has a thousand dollar deductible collision insurance. Peter backs his car into his garage and causes $4,300 worth of damage to the car. How much will his insurance company have to pay? So a couple things here. One is he has this thing called a thousand dollar deductible collision insurance. Collision being the key word. In other words, when his car is in motion, then this coverage is going to cover the damages to his car if there's an accident. In this case, there's definitely an accident. He backed up into his own garage. So uh, he had $4,300 worth of damage. Deductible basically means that the insurance company is going to take that first thousand, then cut you a check for the difference. So we can take this $4,300 worth of damage, subtract out the thousand dollars that is the insurance company's deductible. So the insurance company is going to cut him a check for $3,300 in total damages. All 
All right, example number four. So Bob was in an auto accident caused by his negligence. He has 100, 300 bodily injury insurance. The three people injured in the car accident sued him. One person was awarded $140,000 and each of the other two was awarded $75,000 each. How much does the insurance company pay? All right, so a couple things we need to, we need to talk about here. Uh, number one, uh, this is his fault. So when you see things uh, caused by his negligence, oops, let's get the uh, brush here. So when it's caused by his negligence, it means it's his fault. Okay, so when it's his fault, his insurance company is going to have to pay out, but there are limits to what the insurance company is going to pay out. When you see these numbers, 100, 300, uh, right here, 100 and 300, sometimes on an insurance policy, you'll see an additional, and I'll put this in red, an additional line here and another number, let's say, I don't know, 25 or something like that. That is for something else. What we're talking about here today in yellow is about bodily injury. This is $100,000 per person and $300,000 per accident. So let's say, for example, that Bob got an accident today and he caused this damage. The insurance company would pay $100,000 per person for their bodily injuries. And the most they would pay is $300,000. And then the next day, Bob got in another accident. The insurance company would again pay $100,000 per person and up to $300 for that accident. So this is a per person and a per accident example. So we have three people here who got awarded money. Okay, so uh, let's pick a different color here. We're going to go with the blue. So we got one person that got awarded $140,000. So that's person number one. Okay, now this is more than the $100,000 per person. So the most that the insurance company is going to pay out on this one is $100,000. The other two, they got paid out $75,000 a piece, and that is less than the $100,000, right? So this is going to be $75,000 for that client, and the same thing for the other client. I'm just going to put two little dots there, meaning the same answer. So this is going to be another $75,000 that the insurance company is going to pay out in total. When the insurance company pays this out, this is going to be 150. This is going to be $250,000 that the insurance company pays for this particular claim. All right. So the most they can pay is a hundred thousand per person, right? So when we talked about this per person here, this is this part right here per person. And when we talk about the per accident, that's this number right here. So 250,000 is still less than the 300,000 per accident. So the insurance company is going to pay out 250,000. The remaining 40,000, by the way, that, that, uh, the insurance company is not going to pay out good old Bob here. He's going to end up coming out of pocket for that extra 40 grand. So make sure you understand the coverages of your insurance policy. So you know, you're covered, especially if you own things like your own houses or businesses or properties and stuff, you want to make sure you have the proper coverage. All right. Checking for understanding example. Number five, this is the last one. So we got Desmond here. He has a policy with 50. 100 for bodily injury, 50,000 in property damage, and 50,000 in personal injury protection. That's PIP. He causes an accident in which he hurts seven people in a minivan and four people in his own car, including himself. The 11 people who are hurt have minor injuries. They don't sue Desmond. Uh, the total medical expenses for all involved is $53,233. So how much does the insurance company have to pay? All right. So uh, a couple things to note for this example. So we understand who's going to be liable for what. Okay. So first of all, uh, he has a policy, a, a bodily injury policy, and this is $50,000 per person. All right. There we go. Doesn't want to work. All right. Let's try that again. 50,000 per person. 150,000 per accident for bodily injury. Then he's got 50,000 in property damage. So normally when you look at an insurance policy, the way you're going to see it is 50. Oh man, this little marker's not working. Okay. So normally the way you're going to see it is uh, 50, 150 slash 50. 
where we have the first 50 is for the first 50 and the 150 are the bodily injury. This is one you saw at the beginning. This is per person per accident. And then the last number is going to be on for that, that uh, that's your property damage. So when you see a normal insurance policy, if you were to take out your declaration page of your auto insurance policy, you would see these three numbers on your policy. Those are the coverage limits that you are uh, paying for on your policy. There's an additional coverage here. There's an additional coverage of $50,000 right here. This is personal injury protection. And if you remember in personal injury protection, this is a no fault type of insurance. So it doesn't matter who's at fault here. That insurance policy is going to kick in for medical expenses right off the bat. And the limit is $50,000 per person uh, in, in each individual accident. So we have 11 people here who are injured. And as long as none of them were injured for more than $50,000 for that one person, this is 53,233 for all of the people who were hurt. So we're assuming that each of the claims were less than $50,000 per person. Then this personal injury protection is going to cover the whole thing. So PIP will cover the whole thing. Right. And that means that the insurance company itself will have to pay zero dollars out of pocket, right? The PIP policy will pay the, the entire amount. 